It's nighttime here in Southern Arizona. But news doesn't sleep. The topic of the night is zoos. I know everyone watching has either been to a zoo or heard of one. The first one was built in 1748 in Vienna, Austria. At that time, they were just cages and cold, hard cemented beddings. They've come a long way. Zoos strive to help endangered species become populated again. For example, the California condor went from a few dozen birds to around 170. They also educate the uneducated. When walking around a zoo, there are plaques of information about their diets, whether they are on the endangered species list or not, and some fun facts about them. They entertain the visitors, but they also leave them with information packed in their brains. Research on the animals expand the human knowledge with the living situations of the animals and their need for space and how they survive within their own area. <coughs> Zoos have, they have also helped with advances in medicine for both the animals and for the humans. But for every positive, there is also a negative. So a big issue concerning zoos is a lack of space provided for the animals. Animals like giraffes, gazelles, elephants, zebras, and more, they need, to, they need room to run around in order to survive. And elephants are born in crowds of elephants. And in the zoo, they often only have a few other companions. Their needs are just not met in terms of space. In the wild, they have all the space that they can desire, and in the zoo, it's just completely limited including trying to cram more than one animal in one small disclosure, it just doesn't work. Due to the stress of a zoo from children banging on the glasses and no room to get away or run away, the animals often develop zookosis, which is an equivalent to humans OCD. Elephants will swing their trunks back and forth or bob their heads, and big cats will often groom themselves in order to distract themselves. Animal mistreatment is a huge issue also concerning zoos. For some examples, in Anchorage, Alaska, an elephant named Maggie was forced onto a treadmill so she could get the exercise she needed. But she could not obtain it because she was living in a very small indoor enclosure due to the cold climate which she is not used to and could not live in. And then also in the National Zoo of Washington, D.C., zebras starve to death because of insufficient or incorrect food. And then again in, Vir in Virginia in 2015, over 40 animals were founded to need met med mental, medical, mental care, mental care by the federal inspectors. At the Copenhagen Zoo in Denmark, an 18-month-year-old giraffe was enjoying his favorite food of rye bread when he was shot in the head by a vet. The reason? His genes were too common. They were too common for breeding, so he was not needed for the space. Afterwards, he was dissected in front of a large crowd for educational purposes. The zoo had many offers to take young to take the young giraffe. Uh, okay. The zoo had many offers to take the young giraffe, offering a large sum of money, but the zoo refused and continued with the killing for an educational experience. Zoo animals being killed for space isn't completely uncommon. A surplus of animals is one that the zoo does not have enough room for. They will try to be transferred, but if there is no need for that animal, they will be killed. Zoos are beneficial in many ways to conserve animal life, and they get more funding every year to help the problems at hand. But a study shows that people spend only a few seconds at each exhibit, often taking a picture and leaving. So are they needed? Or are they just calming more harm than good? And now to Reese with a fun fact. Did you know that Billy goats pee on their own head to stay more attractive to girls? And that's it. See you next time, folks.